you for joining. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for, for joining. And tonight, we'll be looking at a topic of caption, what HR needs to do to its 2024 running. Don't worry, sometimes I play with titles and play with words. Last week, we started a journey and we started looking at how to end the year on a high note, what and what to do on to be able to wrap up the year as HR professionals. What we are going to start today with is to do like a little recap and touch on one or two things we were not able to touch on last week due to some technical issues. And I'll also appreciate at some point throughout tonight's um, conversation, feel free to raise your hands at any point. Maybe you have a contribution, you want to share insight, ideas, I'll, I'll recognize you and enable you to, to speak. And you can also drop your thoughts in the in the chat box if you prefer to drop share with us through that particular manner. So our content for this evening, or things being equal, we'll look at uh, conclude with ending 2023 on a year on a high because if you don't end it on a high, it will be somewhat difficult to start to hit the ground running in 2024. I'll say that again. If you don't end 2023 on a high, it will be difficult. Note, difficult, not impossible. So the best way to hit 2024 running is to end 2023 on a high. That's why that is the first thing we'll be looking at. And then we'll look at some HR trends for 2024 called from different um, sources. Hopefully we'll be able to contextualize it into relative to our industry and individual organization. We'll also be looking at skills needed for HR professionals in, in 2024. Of course, this is closely tied and associated with the trends for 2024. We'll look a little uh, into technology and automation. We'll also look at some challenges and then we'll look at strategies for successful HR planning and there will be conclusions and, and take away okay as much as possible i just want to facilitate the conversation again at any point you can raise your hands i will enable you to share your thoughts you don't necessarily need to wait till the end of the of, of this session okay now some of the things you need to do right now again i won't be surprised if some of us or most of us have done some or all of these things but well, let's just, you know, it's a checklist so that in case you've not done it, you can quickly do it in the remaining, say, 30 days or 35 days left in, in, in the year. But one of the things you need to do, okay, is to review your employee records. And you need to review for adequacy and robustness. For example, it's not impossible that some of your employees might have relocated change houses, residence, and you may need to, to update. Some of your employees might have maybe had a change in, in, in status. Maybe they were single, they are now married. Some were married, but now have children or a child, or maybe they had two children before they now have three. You just need to be sure. So one thing you can do is to either like send an email to staff to say, you can list the kind of status change employees may have to say have you had any of one two three four you know in the last one year please update your record so you, it could be like a google form it could be fill a form or maybe for example you need if you are updating your child you may need a birth certificate so you put the necessary information to help them you know update that record effectively. I, for example, you can say if you are changing residence, you may need to attach an evidence or a utility bill or something so that you can file it um, appropriately. I've seen situations where maybe a staff doesn't show up at work for one reason or the other, and then you say, okay, send staff to go and visit them at home, only to hear that they moved houses six months ago, okay? Some other records could be the guarantors. 
So let me quickly say this here. You know, sometimes for some roles in certain organizations that require guarantors, somebody might have been a guarantor and signed up as a guarantor, say, four years ago. The guarantor might have passed. The guarantor might have relocated to Canada. So you want to check for, for example, things like, I know in some maybe financial institutions, they actually make it mandatory that guarantors are revalidated every year. So if, if you can opt to say, oh, I've been your guarantor for the last three years, five years, 10 years, I'm no longer your guarantor currently. Don't assume because that somebody signed as guarantor for somebody five years ago, the person may not have the capacity to function in the capacity as a guarantor. So for example, maybe the guarantor is supposed to pay back pay back if the person defaults or there's a fraud. But maybe five years ago, I was working and I had the financial well with that to be able to functionally stand in as a guarantor. This is four, three years, two years down the line. Even though I'm legally the guarantor, maybe what will happen is you just pick up that man and pick me up and you won't be able to extract any money. So this is one of the reasons why you may need to revalidate, okay? so you know the records that are peculiar to your employees in your organization, in your sector. You may just want to do one more review to ensure that everything is fine and updated. You may also want to check, review your forms, documentations. You know, there are some templates we've been using. Some for some columns may no longer be necessary. New columns may need to be added some lines so you know a lot of things have changed for example in the last one year they've been there, there has been increased emphasis on esg you know environment sustainability and governance now with all this information you've been hearing around esg environment sustainability and governance are there certain forms and modifications to your current forms this is a good time for example um to 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 to, to do that all right and Based on, you know, we've also had a lot, for example, in the last one year around uh, data privacy, depending on the kind of organization you work, whether it's a PLC, a multinational, you probably will have had sessions with maybe consultants, uh, the top four and, and the likes. Now, you want to ensure, this is a good time to ensure that your forms, the kind of data you are gathering, okay, is, is adequate, is relevant, is, is necessary. You want to check your the form so that as against next year any form you are rolling out to either new employees or existing employees or any purpose you know is in requirement is in compliance with the data privacy laws for example is in compliance adherence with the esg i just use these two so there could be other changes it can be sectoral changes just make sure that your documentations okay uh, 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 in, in, in line. Uh, about this time too, you should be putting together your 2023 HR reports. Again, it doesn't matter whether your management is asking for it or not. Put it together, send it to your management, CEO, CFO, all the C leaders, all the, all the stakeholders. You can even say, if they are interested in having a session can be virtual or physical so that you can discuss the key highlights of this report. This is something that will help you end the year on AI. For those of us who, who do training, you may want to, what time are you supposed to do your industrial training fund filing? You need to get the records to, to, together now. Again, if you are working forward, you also want to say what trainings are you doing next year? When are you supposed to and notify ITF, get their approvals. These are the times to begin to, to plan that. Another thing you may also want to be doing about now or on or before the end of this year to end the year on a note is that you may also want to update your job description. You see, job description should, on generally, you should, we should have a look at job descriptions at least every year. Now, note my choice of words. I said, have a look. You can look at a JD for a particular role. You, when I say you now, I mean HR and the line manager and agree that it is okay as it is. Then you can resign off. So I'm not saying mandatorily, compulsorily, 
you must add, you must change or modify. But at least let there be a record that we look at the JD for, for example, the front desk executive, and we say as of today, it is adequate, it is sufficient. And you will see that if you do a thorough job, there will be some rules that there will be requirements for some minor um, um, modifications. Again, you also want to look at review and update your company policy. Ideally, okay, you should check your policies once a year, ideally, once in a year. And by checking the policy doesn't mean you must change. For some, there will be no need, no reason to, to change anything. Some, there will be minor changes, maybe updates and addendums, and some there may be significant changes, maybe based on uh, you know, changing scenarios, changing the dynamics. And also, the process of going through these your policies keeps you um, abreast, refreshes your, your, your memory, okay? Again, if you've not done it this year, this may also be a good time to read the labor law again, cover to cover. I typically advise and suggest to HR professionals, practitioners that try and read the labor law twice in a year. You know, it's just like your your, your religious text. You can't read it once and think, well, oh, because I read it in 2024, I've known it all. If you read it again this December or before November or something, you get light bulb moments on one or two components that not because it was not there before, but just because you to have grown in maturity, you've grown in exposure and you'll be able to appreciate in, in, in a new light. For most organizations, they do January to December for their um, financial year and also consequently their appraisal cycle. As about now, you should be, you already begin to plan for your year-end appraisals, depending on the cycle, appraisal cycle you run in your organization. And also very importantly, at about now, you should be planning for your 2024 appraisals. You know, in a performance appraisal, um, we have planning, we have we have review. But about, at about now, you probably will have done, gone for a strategy session, or maybe the, the organization's board, uh, leadership management might have cascaded the 2024 strategy, or maybe it's in the works. But at about now, we should be planning so that we are distilling the KPIs, the KRAs for, for 2024. I've worked in two, three places where we don't get our KPIs for the year until like February, March. Meanwhile, that KPI is supposed to start from January 1. The neatest thing by now or before Christmas, let the KPIs have been discussed, agreed, debated, validated, and signed off. You know, so that as people are praying to enter the year 2024, their targets are crystal clear in, in, in their memory, okay? They, they, they are not entering 2024 with ambiguity, okay? Help them so that they can also help, help you. All right. You may also begin to say, you know, for some organizations, they typically do COLA. COLA means cost of living adjustments. And it typically, every new year, they, they revise it. It can be 10%, it can be 5%, it can be 20%. Um, and I'm not talking about union negotiated raises, you know, because we I understand that and some of the factors and parameters that impact on COLA, for example, will include uh, inflation. And inflation, consumer price index, cost of living, you know, all, all those things that we are aware of. So that if you are making a case, a justification to your management, to your board, you you are data driven. You you can get the data, the data, uh, the price points across products, rents, you know, uh, consumer items, and then you may also want to check with sister and uh, well, maybe not sister now competition. Okay, other organizations in the industry sectors, what are they doing? What are they paying? You may also want to, you know, rely on information from, from consultants and, 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 and so on and so forth. So these are some things just to help us, okay, end the year 2023 or any year as at that on, on, on AI. Okay, I just want to be sure that we are following me. Please just type yes or say something one thing you've gained or picked so far or something you will act on 
this new week based on that this one slide that um, I've discussed with us so far this evening. Just type in the chat box something you will do, just one action, it's okay for me, that you will take based on, on this con con conversation. Okay, so still talking about um, ending the, the, the year on, on, on AI, so I just put up this uh, checklist. Okay, you can add to it also in the chat box or if you raise your hands, I'll enable you to, to, to contribute. Okay, so you may want to encourage flexibility uh, during this uh, Christmas rush. A lot of things tend to happen between now and December 31. So depending on the kind of pra leave practice in your organization, and that's why, for example, I always encourage leave planning. So that, for example, by now, we should be asking our staff employees to submit their leave plan for 2024. If not, if people just go and leave when they want, how they want, which is not bad in itself, is people's fundamental employee right. But you will see that a disproportionate amount of employees want to go and leave at about now. On a lighter but serious note, suddenly you will now realize that a lot of your staff want to go for Shiloh want to go for Holy Ghost, want to go for this, want to go for NASFAT, want to go for... And if, for example, you are an organization of 200 and you have, say, 80 redeemers, all of them can probably not go for the program. It will crumble your, your operations. You understand what I'm saying? And this is why, if, for example, last year there had been leave plan, it will have been discussed, harmonized. And... So some people, for example, may go this year. They will know that next year they won't go. Some other set of people who will, will take advantage of, of, of the window. At about now, so you should be, you know, discussing, both encouraging your line managers to discuss with employees, and also as HR, you can do one-on-one -on -one sessions. So some of these sessions could be direct with the employee, some with the employee and the line manager. Okay, you can have multi-layer, or some you can even also engage as HR with the line manager, but you discuss their line, line, line report. You see, I know that sometimes we, we package, we form. What do I mean? When you call employees and say, well, what are your plans for next year? Some of them may just be vague. They may not be forthcoming. They will just say, we'll see how the year we go. But if you attempt to discuss with them, at least you are one or two notches higher than the HR that did not even plan or engage with the employees. Forget whether when you engage with them, they were forthcoming, which is our desirable point. So what I'm saying now is, between now and the end of the year, as HR, depending on the number of staffs you have, and if you are a multi, you know, you have a large team in HR, you can allocate, so maybe 20 staff to one HR. So maybe every day, if you are in the same physical geographic location, just schedule 30 minutes and have a session with your staff and document your conversation. If you are not physically together in a geographic space, it can be Microsoft Teams, it can be Zoom. If you have C, it can be a call. But have a, of course, you can drop a, a, a set of questions to ask, oh, how has the year been so far? What are your career highlights for the year? Um, you know the kind of HR interventions, which one impacted most on you? Um, any challenges, you know, anything you like to tell HR, they, those those kind of conversations, they can be helpful. And take notes, listen, you know, and um, we, of course, where necessary, you can even have a report of, of, some, of some sort. Again, most employees, some, well, don't make, let me say most, some employees like to be engaged with respect to charitable, um, functions. So you may, depending on your organization, the organization may already have maybe adopted some CSR initiatives. So again, which one can you get employees to, to participate? I'll share one or two examples. I think if I'm if my memory serves me right, I think that was 2022. Where I work, we just did a used items drive used used means so for example use clothes or or books now of course there are conditions as i'm attached to it the, the so if you are bringing the clothes even though they are used they should be 
um, washed, ironed, and you know, or dry cleaned. So is this not rags? You understand? Then book. So you will realize that you may have maybe employees who have children maybe in secondary school and they are primary school textbooks. They no longer need it. Or maybe the children are not in university or some, maybe the novels they read, they no longer need. So to cut the long story short, quite a number of our employees brought used clothes, used books, and wow. In fact, some of them were like, thankful to the organization because it, it, not, it now became like a form of decluttering uh, for them in their house. And you know, these are useful items, you just don't want to dispose it. And of course, we identify quite a number of charities, libraries, and so on and so forth. And some employees were even involved in the process of um, distributing, sharing some where it was permitted to pictures and, and the likes. You can also ask employees, what's charitable investment or undertaking do you want to embark on this year? You know, um, one of the things associated with the end of the year is, 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 is giving. Don't, when you allow employees um do activities like this, you'll be shocked that one of the things it fosters is collaboration and teamwork. So if you are going to do something charitable, you will see that it will cut across membership and participation will cut across different units and functions. And you will see new um, friendship um, emerging, evolving from, 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 from there. You, okay. So again, many organizations do this and I think we should continue to do it. We want to hear things like end of year awards or, or events. You could have both um, um, recognition programs that are former, you know, those employee of the year, employee of the quarter, best sales, best support staff, <coughs> excuse me, and so on and so forth. Again, to also make it interesting, you can also infuse what we call fun awards. You know, fun awards could include, for example, best male dress, best female dress, best. So, Please, let's be creative. So when you say best dressed, that is one category. You can have best dressed English, best dressed native. You know, if you just do best dressed, why do you want to celebrate only one meal? You know, but by the time you say best dressed English, I doubt if the person that will, the male that will win best dressed English will also win best dressed native. Now, when you are doing recognition, is you just don't want, you want this thing to, to go round so that it can spur and inspire energy. So some of these things, you will ensure that the, the there will be like a voting process. So people will even vote and select. You can even see people like lobbying, saying campaigning, vote for me. I'm the team player of the year. I'm the most supportive person of the year. Of course, there will be some categories of awards that is your ERM, you know, Enterprise Resource Planning System, is your data that we should the person the best sales person you don't need to vote it will be very clear if you want to do things like punctuality award if you clock in the device and the system will easily drop the person who comes in and um, earliest and so on but have a combination of of what do you call it now awards both technical and you know relational because also have awards around your your, your core values. So, for example, if you say innovation is your is your, is your core core value, okay. So, can you have a, an award or awards around innovation? So, if you say integrity is your core value, do you have awards around integrity? Maybe somebody that demonstrated integrity at say, another level, and, and so on and so forth. So, all your core values also build awards, you know, and, and recognition, in, you know, ar around it. All right, so I, I I'll put this particular um, section has added some 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 value. Let's also see, you know. So again, we are HR professionals, so some of the things we are also talking about speaks to what we should do as an individual uh, professional for our, ourselves. So please clear clear your desk, and when I say clear your desk, let's do it this way. Let's pretend that by January one you'll be resuming in a new organization. Do you know how you clear your desk? Which means you check every document, declutter. And then when I say clear your desk, 
Let me define what a desk is. So the desk right here includes your desk, your workstation, but it also now includes your desktop. You know, when I say desktop, I'm not talking about just your desktop computer. So even if you are using a laptop, you know there's a, a place called desktop, okay? Clear your desk, check all your, your folders, the naming, nomenclature of those folders. How many folders do you have? Can you like index those folders? Ensure that the 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 documents are in the right are in the right place. Are, are we together? Check. Don't just you know sometimes you see some people's desktop. You don't see one twenty document. No, you know arrange. Put them in in folders appropriate sort of folder. In number those folders. Also same thing for your physical uh, documents. If you have a a store or a a, what do you call it now? A file, a locker, or something. Check. Some of us, we are carrying broker of 2011. What are you using a 2011 broker for in 2023? These proceeds. So check through this your 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 documents. Make sure they are in 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 the right place. They are accessible, and that the names you use. I think so. Maybe you have a compensation folder. Everything related to compensation is there. Maybe you have a folder for uh, labor relations. Everything that has to do with labor relations is there. Maybe you have a folder for ministry, uh, ministry of labor. You understand what I mean? Be intentional. So this can be part of your activity list as you end the year. You won't believe that if you do this seemingly small mundane thing I just suggested right now, is going to position you for a better 2024 because it once you are organized, you will not agonize. I will say that again. Once you are organized, you will not what agonize. Next, plan your career goals for, for next year. I mean your own go, go, go. Yes, I'm talking to you, my brother, my sister, your own career goals. I I I, I don't care whether it is a big goal. Or a soft goal. I'm bothered when there are no goals. And these goals could be, let me just put some random things. So part of your career goals can be, I will read 12 HR textbooks or books next year. Beautiful. For somebody, it can be six. Somebody it can be two books. So when I say 12, don't say, I'll read any say 12. No, it can even be. So imagine you didn't read any HR book in 2023. And in 2024, we say one book per quarter, and you religiously adhere to it four books. That's a good goal. You can now have other goals like, oh, maybe I'm just saying. So, for example, I have, I have a friend who is also in HR mentorship who watches one HR mentorship video every week at ease or convenience, and then also watches every Saturday. She doesn't watch Sunday. The reason is on Sunday, she has house fellowship in her church. But so if she's guaranteed of watching 52 live HR mentorship, and then also offline, and I, I'm just using HR mentorship as a reference point. So it can mean that you will go online. Imagine like compensation and benefit specialist, for example which means that maybe once in a week or once in two weeks, you go to YouTube and search for the different domains in compensation and benefit and look for a helpful video and watch it. That's a goal. Goal can now also be, let me say the goal one or two people on this call will like, I want to get promoted. That's a good goal. I want to do a master's in human resource, an MBA. I want to do this, that, whatever the goal is, okay? Maybe you've not attended any HR hangouts this year. You say, next year, I will attend three HR hangouts. I will attend one. I will attend um, six. Again, another checklist as we wrap up this year, keep a gratitude list. Be intentional. Take a look at all the people who are within your professional sphere. For example, your line manager or line managers, maybe your head of department, your MD, and then your, your peers. So they can be people within your department, in other departments, and then your line report. So I hope you appreciate that on this call, we have people you know, in different phase and stage 
of their, their life. But all of us have all these people. So even if you are an MD or this core, your board, they are also your line manager, one way or the other. Your top customers, they are. So keep a gratitude list. Try and reflect so that you begin to say, what, what has this person done for me? It's very easy for us to uh, take offense. Re remember how one line manager spoke actually or charitably towards us. But when you keep a gratitude list, one of the steps you can even take, you can even send a mail. They are so, so, so. I just wanted to make a mental note. Earlier this year, you, you challenged me with respect to improving my writing capabilities. And because of that, I took one, two courses. I became more conscious. And today I'm getting compliments that my writing capabilities has improved significantly. I just wanted to thank you for drawing my attention to this issue or challenge or gap earlier in the year. What do you think we are put to that person? Most people take offense when they are corrected, when the weakness is pointed out. You have not even turned that weakness. You've worked up on it. You are not even now returning gratitude later in the year. What happens next time? If that person genuinely has any area of uh, improvement for you, they will not be shy to do what? To, to, to recommend, to suggest, to share with you. Because they will say, ah, when I told her something, some time ago, she was she took it in what in good faith, and she even showed me a gra gratitude. You see, gratitude also helps us to see people in a better light. Okay, and then the their inadequacies are are, are diminished. Um, so 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 to so to speak. So maybe tonight, who are you supposed to express gratitude to? You can begin. Don't wait till December thirty one. The problem is December at that point, a lot of people send a lot of texts. So if you send your own today, this Saturday, today, tomorrow, weekend, there's nothing special. It's not happy new month. Just so it can be text message, emails, WhatsApp message, whatever works. In some instances, you may also want to uh, go and visit people. Just to mention, you may want to buy, don't let me mention any product now, a bottle of wine. And if it's at that level, campaign for those of you who are at that level and people who appreciate that level. You may also want to, so you don't have to buy amper. It can be one bottle of, so I remember in particular, I bought 12 bottles of wine. I identified 12 people in the organization. I wrapped it beautifully, put their names and delivered it to them in the office. It did wonders for me the next year. Don't ask me what it did for me, but it, it, did, it did wonders. Okay, so learn about um, growth mindset. Stay, stay healthy, okay? You see, as the year is going to an end, the, you you guys know this. I don't need to tell, but I will just say it. Activities will increase. More activities in place of work, family engagements, um, events, programs. A lot of people, the things they've been planning to do, they will say we must end it. We must end it. Almost every week now, there is. I have to. I have multiple events. Sometimes I have to prioritize which to go. Some you go spend ten minutes, go to another house, spend five minutes. Please stay healthy, stay fit. Um, if you have been gymming, this is not the time to stop your gym, your, your aerobics, um, your, your fitness. If you have appoint, medical appointments with your doctor, please don't be like me. Visit your doctor, do your checkup. If you're on one medication or the other, please stick to it. Watch. Some of us, maybe you're on special diet. Please, you know, watch, 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 watch. So let's look at a few things you can do as a team or as, as a department, again, as HR, this is one of the good times to run a survey. So for this survey thing, just today, so I was at uh, Alan and Grant's program um, with my, my friend, Benga Totori, and several other great HR leaders, um, you know, who showed up to, to speak at the session. So just after the session, one of my, 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 my colleagues, my friend there, you know, Ajoke Omotayo, who are saying, if you run an employee survey right now, are you sure that people will not, you know, the based on the economy of the governments, who they visit the organization based on the economy? So, which is is is, is a high uh, possibility. But again, how you frame the questions may matter, and the kind of options. You know, you can have open-ended questions. You can have options to that have. Uh, like like a scale, you know, 
um, scale of one to five, one to seven. You can also now have questions so that people have to choose between one extreme to the other extreme. But please still do the, the survey, okay? Your, your post survey. Don't your you don't don't say you don't assume you know all the problems. Ask ask them. Um, I've already mentioned recognition and reward. Uh, so <laughs> this is a mundane thing, but you know, in some organization, it is admin that handles things like rice oil. But I whoever handles it, HR to can support. Sometimes you are the one providing them with the information on the number of staff. So again, are you hiring anybody towards the end of the year? If yes, I hope you have bought their rice, if you give rice and whatever gift items. I've worked in a place where they, I think we hired like two or three people end of the year and we had maybe bought the rice by end of November. So those people didn't get rice and it was a, a sore point. It was a point of, uh, it became like a demotivating uh, factor. So anything you are doing, okay, maybe you do end of the year party, make sure. So it's sometimes better you maybe budget for maybe additional, maybe five people, 10 people, depending on your work, work workforce, so that you may have a little excess than you are trying to be exact. And because of trying to be exact, you now have two, three people who, who, who don't get. You don't want things you do for goodwill to now become, um, leave a sour taste, you know. So some other ideas, again, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to share any idea, drop it in the chat box or raise your hands. I'll recognize you to, to speak and share useful um, insights, okay? Other ideas, if you have not done so, have a strategy session as a department, okay? That strategy session, if you have money, yes, you can go to a hotel, uh, to the beach, somewhere else, you know, to do it. You can also do it in your office if there's no money because it's not every time you, you need to spend money or you will have money to spend even if you desire to spend it. So have a retreat as a unit, as a department, as a division so that you can brainstorm. You can do, you know, you can do things like stop, start, continue. What should we start doing? What should we stop doing? What should we continue doing? And so on and so forth. Um, if you have not paid 13 months, I'm aware that some people on this call have already received their 13 months. I'm looking at you in 3D. Please spend it wisely. January is coming. If you have not, please push for it so that you can pay. Um, just to say, um, I was the, the CEO of Nera Metrics just today at uh, Benga Toto East uh, Alan Grant's program was saying, you know, in passing, that based on available data, a lot of prices will go up effective December 1. So it was saying save, but don't save. So if you really badly want to buy some things, please buy it now. You know, part of the, because the one of the sessions at that uh, um, work outlook for 2024 was that probably most likely dollar will still go up. So if you are planning to buy a laptop or a phone, something that is import dependent, and you are saving towards it, the money may never be enough. Buy it, hey, buy it now, okay? So anything you want to do. Ah, okay, I will mention your name, but my brother says 13 months is a no-no here, oh, I can understand. You know, in some organization, it's not in the employee contract. In some organization, it's a function of if the company does well. And if Forex, for example, have wiped off all your profits, you know, Again, that can be a no-no, like my, my brother said in, in the chat. You also want to organize an end-of-the-year party, get together, love feast. This Just yesterday in my office, um, we even though we did this in commemoration of the in, in International Men's Day and Week, so what we did, we had a games, games evening. So we got some vendors, they brought snooker board, they, they brought, uh, what do you call it, um, ch chess. Not just the normal chess that you put on the table. So the chess is like on the floor. You are walking and playing the chess. Dance, you know, Ludo, um, Scrabble, games. I've never seen, so I've just spent seven months where I work right now. I've never seen the place light up so naturally and so spontaneously. I saw my, the, my head of audit playing Ludo with an officer. 
and you know you play one game you, of course small chops drinks and so on and so forth just just be creative okay you can do it house sport you know create two three four five houses and look for things. Even you don't have to go and rent. You can do table tennis, or you can tell staff to bring um, some of these games from home. They will they will be glad. They will be they will feel excited, elated to do to to do it. Okay. Again, come up with your own plan as HR and share with your management to say this is what you think your twenty twenty four um outlook will, will be. All right. So creative ideas. Fully, you have done your budgeting, your your logistics, you are recognizing achievements. If you are doing um, year-end gifts, you are planning it right now. So let me just share one or two things around gifts, and I'll share different models. Of course, you don't have to do it. So uh, we've done what we call gift exchange. So <laughs> real life, so I haven't mentioned the organization. Real life, hopefully, a lot of you can I, I relate, especially if you have done gift exchange before. So I've done... I've been in an organization where we did a gift exchange. Guess what we did? We said the gifts must not be higher than 2,000 naira and must not be lower than 1,000. And everybody must submit their gift for inspection. And it works. So some people are complaining that 2,000 to 1,000 is too small. We said, no. The intent is to see how you can creatively use 2,000 naira. I've also worked in a place where we did gift exchange. We just randomly pair people's name. So uh, this might be an exaggeration, but let me use it so that you can get the effect. So Mr. A, who picked Mr. B, buys a Rolex rich watch for Mr. B. This is an exaggeration, but I need you to get something. Then Mr. C, who picked Mr. A, bought a box of noodles. Then... Mr. C that box a box of noodles for Mr. A, who bought a Rolex wristwatch for Mr. B, was picked by Mr. D, and Mr. D did not buy anything for Mr. D. At the end of the day, you needed to see the conversations. So people are like, what? How will you buy a box of noodles? No one say, nobody gave me anything, and I bought, and some people say, Oh, this guy is so lucky, and so on and so forth. But when you have a program, a concept like that, don't because of what can go wrong, not run the thing at all. So I've worked in another place where we said, okay, give exchange is not compulsory. If you want to participate, indicate. So only people who indicated were now matched together. And we tried to, we also provide a guideline to say, Oh, nobody should buy maybe above 10,000 Naira so that you won't go and buy Rolex. And then nobody should buy less than 5,000 so that you won't go and buy. So you can tinker around some of these things so that you won't, because of a bad experience on a gift exchange in 2022, not do it in 2023. I just use gift exchange as an example. The core moral here is that if you have done anything in the past, that went sour. That doesn't mean you should scrap it. Do it again, but put appropriate framework, appropriate guidelines, so that you can do it and you can you you can do it well. Again, if you have ideas, suggestions, examples that you have done or you are planning to do, please drop it in the chat box. I we are about sixty on the call, and I know that all of us have done something, are doing something, have done something in the past. If you drop it in the chat box or raise your hands and share with us, we will also, also benefit, okay? So as we approach 2024, HR professionals must adapt to what? Changing trends and challenges, okay? So opportunities are changing, challenges are changing, all right? So I'm entering into the next and final phase of, of, of this uh, presentation. So let's look at some HR trends for 2024. These trends, they are not from me, oh, they are created, you know, reading, reading, um, different sources, some of which we, we are aware and familiar with. Okay, so, and these are global, so not just, um, they are not uh, HR trends for Nigerian 2024, so that you also will have to absorb this strength and then customize it. You understand what I mean? Internalize it in a way that is applicable. So you can't take everything hook, line, and sinker. Meanwhile, before I go on with the trend, let me just um, read this comment from Adewale Adogoke. And he says, I'm planning to organize 
a family day out with all HR team families. I love that. In other words, this is not the organizational, no, just HR. So if you are married or you have a girlfriend or something, or children, they pick a date and all of you, hopefully, I hope it's the company that is sponsoring it, but it doesn't matter. I never thought about this before and I find this very fascinating. This is fantastic because we spend a lot of time together and the families, if they meet each other, I'm sure they already know each other by name because they know you are calling Shaliwa, you are, you are, you are calling Inkechi, you are, you, are, you, are, you are calling Aminat, you know, and they now get to even meet themselves. That's beautiful. You can already see, the, already see Adewale, the number of emoticons and emojis endorsing, validating your thoughts. Imagine you didn't share it. Hope to see more contributions and I see them. I promise to, to, to read them out. So flexible work arrangement, adopt flexible work policies to attract and retain top talent in competitive job. So for example, um, in downstream oil and gas, quite a number of people will tell you that, oh, we can't do remote here. And one of the reasons is that they've almost benchmarked downstream oil and gas with the petrol attendance dispersing the fuel. They are a key component of person down, downstream. But there are so many other functions, for example, internal audits, that they have many career options outside that sector or even within that sector and may be able to work remote. So you need to know the kind of business owners you have. You know, we call them woman business or multinational. See what you can sell. Or if they are not going to buy some of these emerging trends, then also prepare them for attrition. An organization that does 100% on-site must, by necessity, have a higher attrition than an organization that does hybrid. I'll say that again. An organization that does and insists on 100% on-site, in other words, come physically to work, their attrition targets or threshold or allowance must be higher than an organization that allows hybrid. Because by not doing hybrid, some of your employees will become poachable. Because even if you don't increase their salary, but you just give them an hybrid work option, guess what? They will port to the other side. All right? Fantastic. Thank you so much, um, Adewali, for follow-up contributions on how to fund your HR family time out together. Again, emphasis on, on mental health. Look at the, the team for the International Men's Day this year. It was speaking to and around suicide among men. Today, just today, at the program I went to, you know, um, one of the panelists said something. I, I never paid attention or heard it before. So he said, for example, in the last three years, there have been 79 documented suicide in Nigeria. Emphasis on documented, that maybe the media carried, you understand? So there are many more that happened and maybe people just covered it up or, or, or she happened in a village, nobody knew. Of the 79 suicides, guess how many were men? 70. 79 suicides in three years, 70 men. Now, why am I also highlighting this? You know, it's men that you think, oh, we are Mr. Macho, uh, everything is fine. Just because you say, how are you today? And the person says, fine, doesn't mean things are fine. So please, as HR, that's why um, as much as possible, let's increase our one-on-one -on -one touching base with, with our colleagues as part of our HR group. So you can, even in 2024, maybe every month, you can say three hours, you speak to six staff every month. Then you can share it with other HR staff so that maybe in a quarter, you've spoken with all your staff, even if it is 10, 10 minutes Oh. How are you? And if you really listen, if you listen, if you pay attention, you'll be able to seek you. Sometimes when people say, I am fine, you say, you are not fine. You are looking lean or you are losing weight. You, you, you understand? Also, touch base with people around people. You know, that was so you can touch base with the HOD, for example, and be asking one after the other, how is Felix? Is he okay? Is he getting along on the job? Whether he's getting along or not getting along, why is he not getting along? How is mental well-being? Let us show 
that we 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 care. Okay, let's show that we we care. I've already mentioned the fact that we need to evaluate and review our cost of living adjustment as much as uh, as possible. Let's also launch wellness challenges. So let's give example of a wellness challenge. I remember a few years ago in one of my past life, we did something we call it um walk out on walk w a l k walk out on and we now created teams so we asked the interested members of staff to sign up then we got all we encouraged all of them to get what do you call this thing is it pedometer or something it measures your your steps we also discovered that was when i knew that i think maybe samsung or some phone had that um app on the phone we got it registered and we are now people are clocking in the number of steps they were taking daily, weekly, and we were circularizing it to the old staff. You know, we were doing creative flyer to say, team this social step, team that social step, say. and then we were also identifying individual people, the top 10 workers, the bottom 10. You know, when you see your name in the bottom 10, you say, hey, people say, ah, you signed up for work at all, you're not working. You want to make sure that you're not in the bottom 10. By next week publication, when you are in top ten, people will be alien. You are they work oh. so people created WhatsApp group oh, cross functional wellness challenge. At the end of the day, I think the CEO even now graciously donated personally a huge amount of money to the winning team. They went to club, they did party. Oh boy, come and see people saying when are you going to do another workout? Oh. We turned it to a fun event, and after that event, because people had invested, for example, in pedometer understood and what one things we did for that particular challenge so before this the, the first day a day two we got everybody to measure their weight because we're also trying to say that if you really do this work at all at the end it was a 30 day challenge come and check your weight again so is your weight still the same did you lose one kg did you lose two kg and so on and, and, and so forth you can have one month in your organization you say in the month of january Okay, no fuzzy drinks, only water. Or you can say in the month of February, only foods. Or you get people to sign up so that you don't encroach on the right of others not, not to participate. But when you do all this group thing, group thing, it, it changes participation. And there's this group and social accountability and, and peer pressure, okay? All right? Anything you can do that is within... Um, limits and can help people live 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 better. So um, that's that. You also need to be intentional about your job design. You know, purposeful and strategic process of structuring and organizing your job role. Okay, look at each job. Some roles, eh, we need to collapse them. Some roles need to, you know, job enrichment. Some people need job rotation. They've been doing the same thing for three years, for four years. You know, somebody can be in finance and you are in receivables. Can you move that person to treasury? Can you move that person to, to pay boost? Can you move that person to tax? You may want to shuffle some things around without, um, of course, uh, make, uh, without disrupting the work. And you may want to have a plan. So you may not move. So if you identify you want to move 20 people in 2024, you don't need to move all the 20 people in Q1. So move five, Q1. Q2, move another five. Q3, but let people know already that this is the plan to do job rotation in 2024. So I already know that we move me in Q4. That will have started creating what? Excitement. And I'll be looking forward to it. And once I know where I'm moving to, up front, I'll even get a little more interested, put an eye on what is happening there, be extra, extra sensitive. Again, I, I agree absolutely with this next point. A financial awareness program is a key trend for 2024. Even some of our people who are in the abroad, like we call them, they are saying things are getting tighter. It doesn't matter whether it's Australia, Canada, cash and inflow is not as easy as it used to be. And the prices of products and commodities are going up everywhere. So the person that used to have $1,000 disposable income now has 500. I agree absolutely that proportionately to each other, they may still appear better off than some of us in third world and developing countries, but there's pressure everywhere. I'll say that again. Speak to your friends, your cousins, your siblings, your uncles, your 
some of you have parents abroad, speak to them. If you have a heart-to-heart -heart talk, there is pressure everywhere. So financial awareness programs, financial literacy programs, how do you manage debts? How do you plan for your financial future? These things more than ever before are important, okay? These things more than ever before are important. And let me say this. Do you, 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 some of us will have realized that some of us, our financial pressure is not us, it's our dependents. Maybe you have one younger brother that has turned you to eight years. So you may even now need those dependents of yours. You may also want to run them through financial training program. You want to empower them, put them on a, what do you call it now? On, on a budget. Because you, you cannot turn to, 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 to become a clutch. So um, Fumilola here says she wants to ask a question. Uh, if you can raise your hands, I will make you, I will enable you to ask your question. I'm trying to quickly search you out, but if you can raise your hands, it may be easier. And then, okay, I think I've seen you. So Fumilola, I've made you co-host. So you can just raise your hands and ask your question. Hopefully you are close to your device. All right, so- Yes, I have. Okay. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Um, and I want to say thank you so much for the value you keep adding to us every time. Thank you so much. So um, our, our appraiser started last week. Um, okay, let me say yesterday. And so during um, the appraisal session, we always have a part where we allow the employee to feel what their suggestions are and also areas of um, improvement. So there's there was someone that raised that she wanted a job rotation. And this will be the first time, I think second time. Last year she raised it, this year she raised it. And we have a challenge currently with her even in our current role. For like two, three years now, she has not been doing so well, like so well. Um, despite all um all efforts. So many trainings. She's all, she's willing to go for trainings, 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 but we are really not seeing the effects on the job. And so in the, I, I actually raised it with my boss. I said, okay, this person is actually asking for a job rotation. I said, maybe she's not feeling fulfilled where she is currently. And the response my boss gave us, she's not doing so well here. So how do you expect her to do so well in another department? That let us see how well she can do here before putting her in another place so she won't even go and spoil um the job in another department so in this kind of um, situation what what do you feel I'm, I, and I've, over 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 time i've really seen this person so reluctant on her job not putting so much effort and all so what do you advise in this kind of um, situation thank you all right, thank you so much, Funlola. Just to put it out there, I can't override your, your line manager. So we are just having a conversation here. You see, what I've noticed, the, the, I've seen one trap, and that trap is, if you are not performing well in A, why should we allow you to go to B? There is no correlation. You may be performing well in A and will move you to B, and you will not perform well. Similarly, you may not be performing well in A, I will move you to B and you'll begin to perform. There are a couple of determinants that impact on performance. So, for example, core competence, and then, for example, interest, and also people. So, it may be that if you move out to another um, unit or function or role, the people she will be relating with, they may be able to bring out the, the spice in her, okay? What I will have suggested is that on an experimental basis, can we even say just for one month or, or one quarter, rotate her and let us express. So that that way, if God forbid, if she still doesn't perform well, you will now not be saying, it won't be an assumption that if we move her, will she do better or do worse? It will not be, we've moved you and you still didn't do well. And you now know whether the PIP is not working or that person, you know, you know, you, you can be 
a baba, maybe it should be a tailor. So that that person can really find their, uh, where they will align and prosper. I'm not saying job rotation by necessity will solve the problem. But if you can try it out, what do you really have to lose? Try it out. If the person does well, all well and good. If not, and then you 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 you, you can talk to the person to say, don't you have interest in going to Canada and help the person process their Canada trip? Hopefully, Canada will have space for 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 him or her. All right, thank you so much, Madam Adiola Akoni. I see you, my sister, talking up. Now let me see what else. So learning and development. If you want to contribute. Please raise your hands, okay? I will allow you so that you can share your thoughts on how we can hit the ground running in, in 2024, okay? So 2024, learning and development, okay? Provide employees with learning and development grants that they can use for courses, certification, or skill building activities. So um, let me say this. I know it may be difficult to adopt. You know, sometimes we, based on maybe performance appraisal, assessment, developmental needs, who will now say, oh, only Emi, go for a social course at social institution. Huh. That is good, very good. Now, a grant here can say, look, only Emi, your training budget is 200,000 naira. How do you want to use it? Of course, you can now say it must so. Only Emi, who is an HR professional, cannot say he wants to go and use it to learn music at Muzon Center. No, it's not related to HR. Sometimes when you give people some, so you can say your training budget is 200,000 naira. 100,000 will be help you determine what to use it for. The other 100,000 will allow you some flexibility. With So you can say, oh, I want to learn HR data analytics. Meanwhile, maybe that's not what the line manager is recommending. So that there is a form of um, balance. However, that is if your organization can support that kind of democratization of, uh, of learning and, and, and development. Again, mentorship and coaching programs. Now, coaching, you may need to invest in your leaders, managers. Just because you are senior doesn't make you a coach. Just because you are experienced doesn't make you a coach. So for example, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 2014, I had to go for a coaching course. I, be, I had to become certified by CUDA. Thank God I went to that coaching program. It was when I went to that coaching program that I, and I really got to understand what career coaching is all about. Anybody can, and I'm not doubting that. So you may bring established coaches, for example, or run through. And for example, today you have an international coaching federation and other similar bodies like that. Run them through system coaching programs so that we are not coaching on that assumption. You are not, and I'm saying this respectfully, you are not coaching me based on the fact that you are a marriage counselor in your church. The technique in your church may be good for your church, may not necessarily be good for a workplace. You understand what I mean? Mentorship too, and you have reverse mentorship, um, mentor program. So you can have formal mentorship programs, you can have informal mentorship programs, but you, you now want to create a system around it so that knowledge is, is, is transferred, people are equipped and people can, can run. So you can have different um, types of mentorship. Maybe after three months, you rotate the mentees to another mentor. After another three months, you rotate. So that way, mentee A may be able to help some of them in certain areas. Mentee B will have his own unique strength and, and so on. Mentor, mentee C. So you also get people to talk, you get people to 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 relate. So some challenges that will be faced um, at HR again the um, machine learning. You know, let me say this here: uh, when any of my colleagues, I don't like using the word subordinates, but any of my colleagues, people will report to me. Maybe you tell them to do a draft email. Do you know the first thing I check for now? Did they draft it themselves or they used AI to draft it? And if they used AI, you know. So let me say this. You know, you can tell chat GBT. A friend of mine calls it chat GBT. If you don't understand your value, you won't get it. GBT means cheat. So instead of chat GPT, it says chat GBT. In other words, instead of chat GPT, chat cheat. So instead of the 
if you draft, for example, you write a draft mail or memo, you now copy that draft mail and you put it in chat GPT and you say, help me improve this. It is different from, you didn't write anything at all. You just tell chat GPT, please help me write a memo to celebrate men on International Men's Day. The one you write yourself, because you are an employee in that organization, there is a way you will frame it, examples, contextualize it. Then the chat GPT will not enhance it. It will look more real. That other one, you know, let me, when I see something like, I just want to take a moment. I already know staying at chat GPT right now. So <laughs> these are some of the challenges. And then these news to staff, they too are looking like, nah, it's a right tab on a chat GPT. So imagine, you, you may lose reputation and credibility. When people see and know that this was really human thought, they now value it different from when they know that any Tom Dick Canary can just tell chat uh, GPT to, to come up with something. But that's on, the, on one hand. So we must stay ahead by adapting to technology and advancements in HR processes and embracing operations, depending on where we work, our ERP, Enterprise Resource uh, Planning Systems, get more familiar with them. So let me say this, quite a number of us, depending on where we work, we have ERPs. But guess what? We are probably not using up to 50% of the functionality. Engage with your, I don't know, is it Oracle, is it, is it Sage, is it Simless HR, whatever platforms you are using. Engage with them, they are developer. They can help you do like customized reports. You can say, help me generate this report every month, every quarter. Use the automation to your advantage. Are we, are we together? Be more intentional. Ask them, this ERP, what else can it do for me? This and these are the things I do now. Which one can they, can it help me do or can it enhance, assist me to do? Uh, maybe things like Power BI. Uh, pay, pay a little more extra attention. Get So if you are ironing a new team member in your HR department next year, get somebody that is extremely IT and techy. Do you understand what I mean? Reinforce your team. Reinforce your team with someone with an extreme IT um, bias so that as you yourself are trying to even further deepen, and I'm talking to some of our, my older colleagues there, you know what I'm trying to say. I, I encourage you to get better yourself, but that's how strengthen your team with somebody that overtly IT savvy. It will complement your own effort and providing guidance and, and direction. Um, diversity and inclusion will continue to be big in 2024, create an inclusive workplace that celebrates diversity and ensures equal opportunities for all. And this diversity and inclusion comes in different, different forms. From the way we call, so uh, my, my, my sister, um, colleague, friend, doing that about was telling us just today at the program I went earlier today how, as, how about how in a, a, one organization she used to work, they used to call it Christmas party. They no longer call it Christmas party. They've turned it to what? End of year em employee appreciation party. Yeah, while it may not look like there's anything wrong with Christmas party because the party is around Christmas anyway, but because you want to recognize that there are many non-Christians, there are many Muslims, uh, there are many religions, or people who don't even, in quotes, believe in God. Do you understand? So you have to be conscious. Um, she was also saying something like, she in, in a place of work, they had to look re redraft some of their policies. They took out opening prayer, closing prayer. You know, this, let one Christian pray for us. Let one Muslim end it. Because there are some people that don't even pray at all. If you want pray at all, diversity and inclusion. And if you are the one that, you know, during Christmas, you do something then, when the uh, Muslim brothers and sisters, faithfuls, are fasting, then do something for them. And recognize all the special class of people in your organization and do it across board. Or do nothing for nobody. So that that way, um, you are not fostering bias one way or, or, the, or, or the other, okay? So men, women, saying good don't be biased towards uh, married people or single people. Don't let any cluster of your organization feel 
like an outcast because you need everybody to put in uh, their, their best efforts to the table so that the organization uh, can can survive. So let me quickly see. So um, Adela Oshotokun says, concerning the chat GPT usage, I usually draft my communication in my own words and then prompt for improvement. Fantastic. That way, it will still sound, it will now sound like a better you. Exactly. I thank you so much, uh, Adela Oshotokun, for, for that brilliant contribution. Let me see here. Lua Adam Lola Adeyemo says, Globe Smart Aperia is a DEI tool I am currently exploring. It helps you generate your work style profiles and also compare with colleagues and culture. So I'm just sharing this for the first time. Let me write that down. Okay, Globe Smart. I'll check that out. Aperia is a DEI tool. So if you are looking for a DEI tool, you can also immediately after this conversation tonight, just check Globe Smart Aperian. You will learn one or two things. And thank you everyone for, for sharing. That's why I encourage us to share so that all of us can, can learn. Skill gap, bridge gap between demanded skills and available talent through upskilling and reskilling. Okay, remote workforce, we've spoken about that today. We've spoken about data privacy and security today. Okay, increasing reliance on HR technology and collection of employee data. HR professionals must work professional uh, prioritize data privacy and security then change management okay implementing organizational changes whether related to technology adoption or restructuring or strategy shifts requires effective change management and let me say it many times what we do in itself is not bad the problem is how we do it change management is how you introduce new things i'll say that again slowly for emphasis Many times, what we do in itself is good. The problem is how we do it. Sometimes you will just hear, effective tomorrow, the notice is too short. Even if it's a good thing, human beings are creatures and products of habits. When you make something too drastic, you create some form of resentment and they will withhold their discretionary effort. Another thing is, Sometimes maybe you want to introduce a new change in a department. Instead of you to have maybe had one-on-one -on -one sessions with the stakeholders, you brief them, you clarify any doubts, any misconception, but you just bring all of them together and just say, effective tomorrow, uh, Bolu Yemi is now the new assistant manager. Everybody like, ah, 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 change management. So you must have a change management plan. Okay, thank you so much, Leticia. She mentioned resistance that when you don't manage change well, you get undue or necessary resistance. People are so, uh, assisting you safe. You never saw They're not actively resisting you. You know, they will be dragging you down. They will be, they will, they will be, they will be, they will be pulling you down. So for every major program you are doing next year, you need to come up with a robust change management program. And let me say this just one more time. Receive the odd for sudden, spontaneous, instantaneous implementation. Even if you are implementing a good thing, that suddenness, you know, but when you give notice, one month, two months. So that's why, for example, if HR communication manager said, next year, we will do job rotation every quarter. So that you are not trying to surprise. You are not trying to, to shock anybody. People can, you know, Prepare. Some people need a, 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 to be mentally ready. Okay. Some people need to be mentally ready. So some of the skills we we'll need for 2024, and these are evergreen skills, leadership more than ever before. And I mean leadership at all levels. Okay. Effective leadership to guide teams and influence. Then we need to be what adaptable. You know, adaptability is when you can so there is a goal you are fixed on the goal but you are not fixed on the methodology so if methodology a is the approach you are using once you realize a, a, a defect or a change in scenario or circumstance that invalidates the utilization of method a you switch to method b you are still focused on the goal so you could have used method A part of the way, switch to method B, and then end up with method C, but you still end up on the same goal. 
Adaptability means you are working with a partner on a project, things change, you need to move to another partner. You are now not angry and sulking and stuck that, oh no, it is partner A, it's partner A, no. Ability to navigate rapid changes. Ability to navigate technology. Ability to pivot strategies accordingly. Very, very, very important. Communication, this is very key. Let me say this. The more we get to for example, Grammarly to help our English, chat GPT to write, and all these um, softwares now helping us to design PowerPoints. Guess what? The worse our communication skills is becoming. I don't know if I have any witness in the house. You know, one day my MP showed me a message a, a manager sent to him. Official communication, even though it's possible, 90% of it was abbreviation. Meanwhile, my, my MD is, is a middle-aged man. You know, what do we call um, baby, baby boom? I said, how can you be giving me an update on an investigation and you are using all this abbreviation? There was no one sentence the president used one or two abbreviations. I'm like, come on. Even though you are using an informal tool, let us assume, let's agree that WhatsApp is an informal tool, but you are not texting or sending a message to your friend, not your spouse, not your sibling. This is a senior colleague. How many extra seconds will it take you to write it in, in full? And communication is both spoken, uh, oral, okay? Can you be very brief? But in being brief, let me say this, and I'm saying this very respectfully. When I receive an email from anybody, do you know the first thing I check? the subject. There are people here, maybe there has been an ongoing email trail. The substance of the conversation has changed, but they won't change the subject. They will be carrying the subject of two, three days ago. Once you look at the information you are sending, check again. Sometimes when you forward, how many people are you forwarding to? Is everybody on that mail trail? Should they be on this part of the conversation? Don't just say, oh, I just click reply or Please, let's, let's work on it. Um, I'm from Southwest Nigeria, and there's a proverb, and I'm saying that proverb in English. So forgive me if the English breaks. It's because I'm speaking Yoruba in English, saying that lack of communication is the beginning of what is Oriburuku in English now. I'm stranded. Who will help me? What is Oriburuku in English? So let me improvise. Is lack of Lack of communication is the beginning of disaster. Please, I need some of us, anybody that can speak Yoruba, if you can quickly call grammar for me, that they should translate only Buruku to, to English. You can see even me now, I need to improve on my communication. Okay, so let me quickly check the synonyms people have given to me. I'm not endorsing the synonyms, I'm just reading them. So somebody is saying lack of communication is stupidity. I don't know if I agree or not, but let me just check. Okay, Aminat says, lack of communication is the beginning of being unfortunate. I think that is close. Yes, Toib says, lack of communication is the beginning of misfortune. I think that is also very close. Oh, you guys, you went to proper school. Yes, so let me rephrase. So lack of inability to communicate can make somebody unfortunate. Inability to communicate can make somebody to be to, to learn into misfortune. I don't know if you've been there. Maybe they are trying to consider somebody for a managerial role or a branch manager or to add a new business. Ah, they will say the person is not articulate. I know one or two guys, their dream babe is because they could not speak English. That's why they couldn't even approach the girl and get her to say yes. They had money, they had bars, they, they, they were fine boys, but they were not articulate. Eh? Please, let's polish our. Okay, my sister, Madam Rita Babalaya, says that. Lack of communication is the beginning of confusion and team dysfunction. Mama, that's a special one. Lack of communication is the beginning of confusion and team dysfunction. Absolutely. I think I can summarize it in that way. So communication is key in, in, in 2024. Again, the legal and regulatory knowledge. You need to stay updated on our labor laws, no matter how old you think they are. Okay, ensure HR practices complete. 
I suspect that more than ever before. I suspect this is my aunt now. Most likely, most likely, more companies will lay off next year. Most likely. Most likely, some more companies will fold up. Now, this is not a prophecy, please. I'm, I'm not uh, so that you don't say, why are, are you saying bad thing? Okay, and this is not uh, God forbid. You can at least you, you had in the last one week, I don't want to mention name, one company that well, is it folded up, they stopped production, they are into pharmaceutical. You can mention the name in the chat group if you know the company I'm talking about. More companies will follow suit, especially because of all this foreign exchange. It's going to be unsustainable for some companies, especially that depend a lot on forex and importation of raw materials and technical input. And the, one of the reasons is that you all here can testify, at least those of you with me here in Nigeria, that our purchasing power is reducing significantly. If purchasing power is reducing, that means we will not be spending as much money as before. Companies will be struggling with um, wage bill. With uh, Meanwhile, cost of diesel is going up. Cost of petrol is going up. So please, if you are the HR where you need to lay people off, you need to do things, please don't be in a haste. Do it the proper way. Engage, communicate, okay? Don't be malicious. I met one of my, my friends. In fact, he's my cousin. I don't know if there's any work called cousin in law, okay? Uh, the cousin the, the cousin of my, you know, of my cousin's husband, Shebi, his cousin in law, told me how he was busy serving people later, serving people later. Then one day they called him to the same boardroom he had been calling people to. And then they served him later. Please, let's do things properly. Okay? Um, we can't overemphasize analytical skills. And this speaks to data, data, data. And there's nothing we do. It could be qualitative, it could be quantitative. Data is data. Some people think data is only number. Okay? Yes, qualitative data can be translated towards numbers. Okay, um, very effortlessly. So you can do questionnaire and then you do coding. You can turn it yes and no. Yes is one, no is what? Zero. Are you with me? Yes is one, no is zero. So qualitative, quantitative, you can always turn it to, to numbers to enhance um, analysis so that the advice, quality of advice is not based on, on, on sentiment. Last but not the least, uh, strategic thinking. Okay, understanding the organization's business goals, aligning HR practice continuously with the overall uh, strategy. So let me try and close so that uh, we can catch our breath and rest and people who want to contribute can do so. 2024 strategic workforce planning is very important. All the roles, in again, do you still need them? Are there roles that you should combine? Are there some roles that should be outsourced? Are there some roles that you should scrap? And maybe are there new roles that should come on board? Check, check, please. Succession planning, more people will jack back. And, you know, somebody said that our fifth anniversary, for those of us that were there, that now everybody, she's suspecting that you're jack back, whether you jack back or not. She's already has created a recruitment pipeline you know, for all the roles. So that when you tender, you serve breakfast. That's what we call resignation now. When you serve us breakfast, that you are no longer staying with us or you are moving on. Yes, we try to retain you, but we've already had the pipeline. We've done first, second level interview. We have two, three people for every key role. Then internally to, you know, the readiness for everybody to be able to Take over and please don't do this. Yeah, doesn't look like somebody that will jackpot. Nobody carries jackpot on their head. In fact, the people that look least like going to jackpot or look least like going to resign are your candidates for resignation. Just back up all criti critical roles. Okay, very, very important. Okay, ensure you involve all your key orders, uh, key stakeholders, and everybody's a key stakeholder one way or the other. If you are unionized, work with them more than ever before. Um, all the opinion leaders work with them more, more than ever, ever before. All right, so let me see if there's any other thing. Yeah, we've spoken about telemanagement system, the automated streamlined talent acquisition, onboarding, performance management, succession planning, employee sales service. These are things we know, AI power, recruitment, um, HR software. All right, so conclusions and key takeaways. Stay agile, okay? 
adapt to the changing landscape, um, embrace technology. And when you are staying agile for next year, eh, next year is not the year that something will happen two weeks, you are still under this state of shock. No, don't let anything shock you more than two minutes and shake off and move on. In fact, you know, there's what we call scenario planning. Do scenario planning by yourself now that what if this happen? If my CEO uh, leaves next year, what's my plan A, plan B, plan C? Ask if I am sacked next year. Don't say God forbid. Just ask. This conversation I'm having with you right now, I did it with a friend of mine. It was in my living room. That time I was living somewhere at uh, uh, Shomolu Axis. Okay, I used to call it Shomolu Phase 1. You know, it's area that have Phase 1, Phase 2 that are the big area. But my own was Shomolu. Now, me create the Phase 1. The Phase 1 doesn't exist anywhere. He was a medical doctor. And I asked him, we were having a conversation. I said, even though you're a medical doctor and the chances are slim, what if you lose your job? And that guy took that thought to us. In a space of one year, a medical doctor, he had opened two medical laboratories, functional, one in Moshi and the, the other at, um, at Osho de Axis. Two years after that conversation, Lagos State doctors went on strike for eight months. Guess what? Lagos State government didn't pay them. The guy increased from two medical labs to six. He was now borrowing other medical doctors' money. What happened? I asked him a question. So scenario planning is not saying, God forbid, what if I lose my job next year? Way, if it happens, because you already have a plan, your response time is faster. And that's a part of the concept of agility. What if your subordinate resigns? What if your line manager resigns? What outsource your department? What if embrace technology? No matter your proficiency level, technology, even me it must be better. Today, I just well bought a software. Not an HR software before you say come and give me. Okay, I'm also I'm also a researcher. So there are certain part of research that sometimes I need people to help me. One, don't even have the software. Just today, I just got it. A software. I've already commissioned someone to help me get a second. I want to be, for lack of a better word, and this is not due to self-centeredness. I want to be self-reliant next year. So when I get my data, I want to run the data myself because I now have the what the, the tool, which means I can wake up at 2 a.m. Can I call you at 2 a.m. and be telling you to help me run data? Embrace technology, whatever it is in, 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 in your function. Okay. Put people first, okay? Prioritize employee well-being, diversity, create a positive work culture, plan. Articulate your plans, assess your progress, gather feedback, and adjust as necessary to what? Ensure the success of your initiative. So just to wrap up, if you need to take a certification, please take it. And those of you that are certified, go and read your certification material again. All the things you learned, are you using them on the job? Which ones are you not using? Try and what and begin to, to, to use them. Ladies and gentlemen, at this intersection, I want to throw it open completely to contributions. Well, maybe and an questions. All right. Contributions and, and questions. How do we eat 20, 24 running? So if you have tips, insights, please don't be shy, please. Um, all thoughts, ideas are welcome. In a few minutes, we can take it so that we can be out of here. If you don't talk quickly, I'll be very happy to wrap it up. Okay. So anyone that wants to contribute, ask questions, let me quickly check the chat box if there are um, comments there that I've probably not read. Okay. All right. So you can see the name of the company. I don't want to mention it. But quite a number of people mention the same company for you to see the uh, that is validated. Okay, fantastic. So my friend here, uh, Abdulaziz Ahmed says, bank are what expected to be recapitalized. Therefore, layoffs are inevitable next year. For example, I, I, I didn't. I'm not aware of this. Now I am aware. When I was saying my own. This recapitalization was not a factor that was visible to me. Thank you so much, Abdulaziz. Please. So I, you know, sometimes one of some of our problems is the thing will happen three months, we will still be under shock. Maybe it's your brother, is is your cousin. Also prepare the stakeholders in your life, your spouse, if you are married, your brothers, or 
you know, anybody that has something we eat and it will eat you, prepare them also for, for 2024. Okay, please prepare, prepare them. We've, we've done financial literacy once or twice on, on this our platform here. Yeah? Go and watch those videos again. Please, even if you say six months saving is too much, okay, what of three months saving? Okay, what of one month saving? The saving can be in full stuff. It can be maybe pay your rents. So, for example, I was telling someone recently that, uh, that my rent for next year, I want to have it this year. My rent next year that is due middle of the year, I want to make sure. Normally, I'm not in a hurry to save my, my rent. But this year, I just have an answer that quickly have it, I, I know, fix it somewhere. You have a, your children education fund. So I'm saying this because as, for those of us that we get bonus, please don't use everything to do dirty December. I can kneel down for you. Don't use everything December, please. We don't know what next year will bring. And we don't mean it in a negative light. Those of you that have been saying you want to do certification, all certifications will go up there. Why? Dollar is going up. If you like your SPHRI, your GPHR or SHRM SCP. Don't do it. The dollar will be the same. Oh. The thing you should have used 200,000 naira for. You will use 1 million naira. They will look at me. I will rejoice with you when you pass. I will take uh, water and wine together. Please don't procrastinate. Anything you need to do, please do it. Okay, so I think I can see some comments here. Some people are messaging me. It's okay. So uh, my brother here says, how do you ensure a robust pipeline for critical areas? What is the best practice so that we don't alarm the employee in that room? Very good question. Now, sometimes when people are interviewing, you will see them, they will use something like talenthr at gmail.com. This is one of the reasons why. Because I saw your organization, sir. The moment applicants should send their email to something, something at something, something dot com, they will say, the people in that company say, your company is recruiting, you know, say my company, they will now forward the mail to, to you. Next thing, you will see your role. You will cause panic. That is one of the reasons why people create all this um, HR, H, HR for NGO at gmail.com. So you just say an organization in the NGO space is hiring program manager else, uh, this, that, that. Now, the downside to it is that some people will not apply. Why? Some people don't like applying to anonymous organization, but it's some people, not everybody. The other thing is, if you have recruitment firms that you have also partnered with already, at least these recruitment firms, without mentioning your name, can say the high profile NGO in the health space is looking for, and they will help you. They will probably help you get the CV and share with you, depending on their agreements you, you have with them. The final thing I'll share on this pipeline thing is that you can now, for example, that's why you should also try to be visible and active on, on LinkedIn. So if you can, if you are not, get let your organization get you like a recruiter license so that you can chat people directly and say, oh, um, they are so, so, so. I see that you are currently program manager with so, so, so organization. Even though at the moment we don't have a vacancy, but we would like to keep you in the pipeline. Can you please send me your, your, your CV? Or can we just have a, a, an exploratory conversation so that we can get to understand your your next career moves and then you can be in the pipeline and uh, which you can be on your radar. Do you, do you understand? So you, you cannot begin to maybe go to LinkedIn and say program manager in health NGO. It will bring out names for you. Private chat, all of them. Some will respond. Know some people, you will chat them on LinkedIn today. They will read it October 2024. Have you met those kind of people before? But those that are, what do you call them now? Um, social media savvy. You may chat them today, by today or tomorrow they will have responded. And so those are some of the ways. I hope I've been helpful, sir. If you require, sir, you can call me offline and we can um, discuss it further. But I think I've provided um, quite some information 
to, to help you. Let me check again if I have any. Okay. And thank you so much, Precious, for your question. I like it. Please ask a question. There's no question that is um, pedestrian or free. Bank recapitalization means when you tell banks, try it now to grow bigger. And one way to grow bigger is either they will consolidate or they will match. I'm trying to be as lay as possible. So if, for, for example, as at the last time, the minimum capitalization for us was 25 billion. The federal government or the central bank will now increase it to what? 100 million. So some people may be able to raise it directly, maybe through their shareholders, new, uh, they may raise new shares, right to use, and so on. But some, so what happens is you now see two, three banks margin to become one. Certain roles will now become what? Redundant. You, you only need one chief human resource officer if three banks match to become one. I hope that um i hope amos i've been able to provide an answer that is better than google's own all right thank you so much let me see let me see all right so i think Fumlola is saying as part of diversity and inclusion we should also work on managing and integrating the different generations currently in the workforce very beautiful contribution this will reduce conflict thank you so so much for that contribution would anybody like to say anything? All right. So I'd I, I like to thank you most sincerely um, for joining tonight. Uh, I do not take, take take this for 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 tomorrow. Okay. I have I, I'm I'm so relieved that somebody uh, finally has uh, decided to say something, even if it is closing remarks. You need to unmute, sir. All right. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, loud and clear, my brother. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you so much for this session, sir. It's been really, really enlightening. Thank you so much. Uh, my contribution to the session is going to be that HR professionals should understand what is happening in the business space that the organization plays in. Um, this is so that you can properly advise your organization and then also be able to plan ahead. Now, for example, someone just give, uh, give, give us an example about banks having to recapitalize next year. So, I mean, that's for you to also know that the space that my organization plays in, I need to know what is going on there so that when ideas are required, as an HR professional, I can actually bring up ideas. It's not just about the recruitment part. It's not just about, you know, you can also make a valuable contribution. And, you know, we've you've also taught, taught us and uh, spoken about HR, you know, being part of the board and then being able to advise and all that. That's how HR can actually be able to have a voice and speak up in those places when we know what's going on in the space. That's one. Number two thing I want to say is regarding, you know, studying your competitors, right? What are the people that play my space? What are they doing? What does their salary scale look like? So that you can also be competitive. And then you're also able to attract the best talent because these things would affect your bottom line. All right. When you don't have, you know, um, you know, good talent, your organization, that may be because you are losing your people or you are not able to attract effective people as you should. So I'll just round off here, sir. So it's also important that we, um, as HR professionals, also study competitors, even regarding human resource, what are they doing so that we can also either meet up with them or surpass them. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Thank you so much. Very helpful tips. Study your competition, mirror them, outshine them, see what you can do. My brother, you have the floor, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Uh, okay. Um, first of all, I must say thank you. Thank you very much, my boss. Thank you for the wonderful insights. Very helpful. However, I just have... Um, I'll call it a suggestion because um, this has been applied in some other form I've been privileged with that call. So on this platform, can we begin to have um, small committees? When I mean committees, I mean 
possibly people, HR people in the same industry where part time it can be agreed to meet, meeting to share ideas, just like the last person just said. Ideas, initiatives, yes, sometimes we may be um, competitors to the, 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 the business people, but as HR people, on the other hand, we are co professionals. So, where we share ideas, initiatives, in fact, probably uh, um, strategic thinking, such that when we get back to our individual organizations, um, we bring more to the table as a professional. Who probably by this uh, uh, um, association on this platform are working and relating together. It is helpful in some other place, like I said, where we have, okay, for example, we have um, um, people in European association, European companies, HR people there come together part time. We think, we talk, we share ideas. So I think if we can probably look into it, refine it, then we can adopt it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your contribution. Our two quick response, brilliant idea. One, that's one of the reasons why we try to do this hangouts. And at the hangouts, we introduce people, get people to mingle. And... The next thing I also want to say is that, you know, there are also other platforms. So I'll give you an example. NECA, Nigerian Employers Consulting Association. And they have sectoral and meeting. So, for example, the discos, manufacturing, and so on. So that's why you should also explore multiple um, settings. You know, you can't in any one setting. God has created us to be in families and to be in multiple settings. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm happy to see my sister. My Baba Lola, you have the floor now. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I think for me, the or maybe like a word of admonition. Next year, like we all know, I mean, things are already showing us that it's going to be tough. I mean, there's no, even if you say you are a prayerful person, one way or the other, they are, you are still part of the world. And the economic system right now in Nigeria has left so many people thinking about what to do next year. And just like you said, it's Jakwa. And it's not Jakwa, even Jakwa there is affecting them now, really. It's affecting them. So I want to say for every one of them in terms of um, our mental health, that's number one, let's not look at another person's um, pressure or another person's journey because you don't know what they're going through. And don't look at people and just feel that they've gone ahead of you and they put pressure on yourself. The thing is, let's be concerted enough to develop personal mission statement for ourselves. Don't compete with another person, compete with yourself. Your best competitor is only yourself. And then number two, in doing some things, just like you said earlier, most of us in the way we see funds, we see money, we think it is easy. We need to learn how to save. We need to learn how to invest. We need to let the money work for us. It's like the commitment for December now, um, things are going to be high. People will probably be paid bonuses. People will probably be paid productivity and things like that. Then you ask yourself, what percentage of this money are you going to invest? Will I invest enough that will cover six months? Because sometimes those little, little things that we think are not happen, when they happen, you, you, that, that's when you realize that there are no people and you don't have friends because every other person is also being under pressure. And that is not the time to determine whether you're friends or whether you don't have friends because everybody is feeling it. Then in the workspaces, especially HR um, leads as well, there's something that um, you said in terms of writing skills, and it's just unfortunate. I told some people, I said, oh, in some organization, when I'm doing recruitment, I'm like, gone are the days where a tutu of probably in 2005, that's somebody with a second class, um, what uh, second class, is it to their second class lower? You can take it, yeah. So if you have somebody now with that tutu, honestly, that person is a third class because the quality of education has deteriorated. So you see graduates that are struggling to write letters. You see graduates that cannot speak. Somebody texted me, I will reach out to me on um, LinkedIn. This guy has been like putting pressure on me, like help me, help me, help me, you know, you're the only one on earth. And I said, okay, let me push this guy forward. I gave this guy an appointment. 
And before then, he had written something to me that the organization that he had interview with, they maligned him. They didn't, maybe because he's Yoruba, it was more like a, a mixed kind of heritage in terms of ethnicity. By the time I invited this person to come and write just simple something on leadership, honestly, you would not believe that it's a graduate that wrote that. So I want to enjoy it. I wrote something out on LinkedIn today, and that's because we always think that it's the organization that's supposed to train us. No, the organization is supposed to assist. We're supposed to boost ourselves in terms of our capacity. If I we were to take a poll now, say how many people went on training like three or four times, let's leave out the training that we do on this HR uh, mentorship. How many people have like taken a conscious effort to develop themselves? And if you don't develop yourself, when there are opportunities, you find yourself being relegated and then you complain because somebody joined like two years ago has improved himself or herself and then you're comparing yourself with that person. And then for most times, when opportunities to volunteer comes up, we take it as if it's just work-life balance. Honestly, there is work-life balance, but there are some um, challenges that will come out that that is what we sell your what in that organization. That challenge that you're running away from, it is what will make them remember you for good. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Very, very instructive, very instructive. So we'll be taking final comments because of time from Ola Inka. Ola Inka, you have the floor. Take your time, but you are the final comment. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and thank you, Oluyemi. Thank you for always. Your videos have been very insightful. Um, so I am also going to be tolling the line of Rita Babalola, but right now I am going to be speaking more on if you know you are 38, 39, and in your 40s, especially for those of us that have clocked 40, please, at the back of your mind, it's important to just say, I have the next uh, 10 years willing, God willing, you're still in employment. What are you thinking of doing should you be faced out of work? Because we have more of the age bracket of uh, 22s and so between 22 and, uh, you know, 28 now seem to be flooding the market. As much as there are some question marks on what they are able to do when we complain, don't forget, we are the ones out there now and it is whatever we breed or whatever we teach them, that will be what we will be breathing. And these are the same set of people that would probably be governing or managing the economy or countries where we might find ourselves, whichever way it is. Start thinking of what you want to fall back on. And like Rita Babalola said, upskill yourself. Like you have to set aside some funds for personal growth, personal trainings. Don't wait for your organization. Don't just um, stay behind and expect magic to happen. Network. Don't just network with those that are in your pairs. Try to network with those behind you, meaning the younger ones, because they are the ones you will still meet later on to seek for consulting jobs or any sort of uh, business that would help sustain you. For those people that are in their 40s, you're not getting any younger, you're getting older. Help yourself. Think of what you know would be important to you as you are joining in your career and in your life. And like Yemi said, your health is very key. Take it seriously. More of water, less of the fizzy drinks. Thank you, everyone. Wow. That was a very apt, succinct feedback. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you to everyone. I would just like to respond to just one comment that I saw, and that will be my closing um, remarks. And somebody on the chat group said, I think she operates in an organization that they are very lean, a small team, and how do you do succession planning? So let's assume that your team, the whole organization you are 12, at the basics, at the minimum, look for roles that are complementary slightly. So for example, finance and audit, they require to some extent the same basic competencies. So you have chartered accountants in audit, chartered accountants in account. So the head of audit, for example, can be the backup plan for the CFO and vice versa. 
So just look at the job families or job types that you have. Emphasis on the closest. It may not be a perfect proximity, but the closest. So for example, as head of HR now, so to speak, you can be in succession plan for the marketing, if that is the most reasonable approach. And the, what that means is that, for example, when that person is marketing, is mailing anybody for their marketing activities, they will always copy you and, and, and vice versa. So what you are trying to do is a situation where once somebody leaves for any reason, the location, God forbid, death, you are, you are looking at, so, so one of the things succession planning is doing is also business continuity and to reduce key man risk. At least, even though somebody leaves, you will still feel it, but it's different from if there was no backup plan at all. The backup plan may not be 100%, maybe 60% or 70%, but at least you are not on, on, on ground zero. And as the business does better, and you employ more staff, you'll be able to intentionally, you know, hire more people so that the business can support each, each other. You know, even sometimes what happens if a team member, for example, falls sick and is hospitalized for one, two months. So succession planning will also help you to mitigate to some extent the, 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 the chemo, chemo risk. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure engaging with us tonight, as always. We'll see you again very soon. Good night, everyone. Thank you.